Country, one of the great bands from the 1980s that you do not know, that you have never heard of, unless you watched MTV in the 1980s. Big Country, as you can tell, they're a little Scottish, eh? a little bit Scottish, and a great band. That was Look Away, Look Away from the Lies That Your Eyes, uh, I don't know, something like that. But from the uh, lot, look away from, look away with your eyes from the lies that might be told. Don't, don't look away. We don't want you to look away from the lies. We want you to look them straight in the eye and absolutely crush the people putting them out because that is what needs to happen. Because it feels like to me, we're reaching a 
a crisis situation with some of the shit that's going down right now. Uh, isn't it interesting? Stuart Adamson, the lead singer there, committed suicide. Um, I think about 2013. And they had a great thing going. They were very popular in Europe, very big in, in Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and England. They had no re, you know, and he gets to get up and play on stage in front of thousands, you know, sometimes tens of thousands of people. And um, my mic is too far away. Well, it's the best I can do. So uh, it's actually not too far away. It's at a normal place. But um, and he commits suicide. You ever know, but they're also, he was a wild-eyed liberal. And I'm like, do you ever... Do you ever think about it? How many conservatives ever commit suicide? Anybody know? No, I, I just saw a story today that was like the liberals, the woke people have like the highest levels of anxiety and depression. And yeah. they have just lost touch with reality. They're not funny people anymore. I remember liberals used to be, you know, they used to run all the good co comedians back in the 90s and the 2000s. And now it's it's dreadful. Now they really feels unwatchable. Funny. They are not they are not funny. They have no sense of humor and they often sell that's fine. One less voter for pedophiles like Joe Biden. All right, guys. Great to be with you here. Toxically masculine Tuesday with me. I'm your host, Mike Barra in Las Vegas, Nevada. Joined as I always am by my awesome co-host with the thick, thick, bushy eyebrows tonight, Brooks. What's going on there? Dr. Uh, Brooks Agnew is somewhere in the Carolinas. Brooks, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah, my eyebrows started making noises the other day, so I fed them fertilizer. And <laughs> I do that too. I have to. I have to. Die. I wouldn't have any at all. They're getting so thin as you get older. Um, I, by the way, I forgot. I'm drinking nothing but Dr. Pepper tonight. I gave blood today, um, mm -hmm. which is something that's great for you. If, if you're over 50, your health. It's great for your health. It thins your blood. It it, it rejuvenates your body. But I, I was a little woozy, so I'm like. I'm staying away. This is a lot more than I'm used to them taking. I took a whole pint today, so I, uh, I'm going to take it easy and drink some Dr. Pepper. Brooks, what are you drinking tonight? I'm drinking Perrier. I worked really hard on the house today. so awesome. uh, Of course. It sounds like there's only one alcoholic in the group tonight, and that would be, as <laughs> always, TV's Blake Wally. Blake, how are you doing? And uh, somewhere east of California, and what are you drinking? Uh, doing well. Great to be here. Um yeah, I guess someone's got to represent, so it might as well be me. Um, and Mike, it's, it's the best time to drink is when it, right after you give blood, from what is I've heard. It? Yeah, well, not if you have a show yeah, to do, you have to like actually manage a few things. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll be we drinking box wine. Box wine. I could always take a break and go start polishing off my uh, fireball. Oh, there you go. Sweet, sounds good. Um, I like fire. It sneaks up on you. It's only 40 proof, but after about six shots, you're kind of... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, space they, here. Big, big country sing the song. Big country. They sang a song in a big country, but you know that's too obvious. I don't like to play the hits necessarily for the. You know, it's like what I'm going to do: play Kiss and play rock and roll all night. You you got to play. You got to play the uh, yeah. the other songs that you like, and then have some special meaning to you, perhaps. So yeah. Uh, Adam Greaves wants your cap. Brooks, fuck Joe Biden. Um, yeah, you get these hats by going to the events. You go to live events, and there are tables and tables of irreverent stuff like this, which is perfect for the toxically masculine Tuesday. Yeah, uh, Adam's also going to go. He's down in London today, so he's going to go in search of Kate. Yeah, good luck with that. We'll be discussing that as it goes along. Paul Martin says, cut a brief bit of Saturday Night Live a few weeks ago. It was beyond pitiful. Not funny to say it was stupid is an insult to the concept of stupidity. <laughs> it was officially canceled. That's good, Christine. But they also did have Sydney Sweeney on. And wow, does she have bazookas? Uh, that reminds me, there's there's something with um, something somebody posted. Uh, I stopped giving blood to the American Red Cross after 40 years when I found out they've been assisting the illegal aliens. Yeah, I didn't go there. I went to another private bank that uh, doesn't do that there was a um uh let me see here yeah you know unvaxxed blood is a premium out there well yeah they did ask me that question whether i was vaccinated or not uh somebody did a parody of uh of uh, um twitter x community notes and they posted this one this one is great i'm going to see if i can get it up here on on instagram and have everybody look at it this is so this, speaking of sydney sweeney yeah uh slate it needs to be said this is a tweet 
Sydney's Sweeney's boobs are not that big. It says readers added context they thought people might want to know. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best use of co community notes, as I said, are not only uh, informative, but they are they are essential to saving democracy. Absolute proof. That's and you can breathe at high altitudes. Yeah, and you can, yeah, at high altitudes. So, yeah, and it was funny because it was funny because I have this uh, friend, uh, JJ, JJ Ainsworth, who does, she does a lot of trope, you know, digging around in ruins and things like that. And um, she has really big boobs and she goes, they seem normal to me. <laughs> so, like, yeah, well, no. it's Guy Show. We're going to talk about boobs. All right, guys, let's get started. There is so much to cover. It's almost difficult for me to decide where to start um spare me you guys are lucky that i did not get a chance to find the picture of leticia james topless but assure me i assure you if i could it would be on the stream and you would have to suffer and look at it like i know ruin, ruin appetite but yeah post like by mike fair okay um so the big thing i think that is you know, again, we just lurch from insult to insult to things that make us furious to, I, I mean, make me want to go out and go postal on on Democrats is, uh, and, and I say that, of course, I'm talking about a game, a video game. Um, Peter Navarro, who is a patriotic American who served President Trump with honor and distinction, is being sent away to federal prison tonight because he defied a congressional subpoena, which has been done by Democrats dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of times. Like and Eric nothing Holder. has ever fucking happened to them. And, and I'm furious, not because this is happening, but also because our side doesn't seem to be doing anything about it, like they should, which is basically arresting these mofos. But let's, uh, let's zoom in on uh, Peter Navarro and let him speak his piece, because guess what? Guess what? Fox News actually cut him off today. So uh, if you can actually believe that shiz, Fox News cut him off. But here's uh, here's Peter Navarro earlier today, um, completely, absolutely defiant about it. Hey, um, you guys will uh, certainly focus on that little story, but what, what I suggest to you as, as journalists is that there's two really bigger stories that you might want to report on and, and even uh, do some research on, uh, because these are, these are big issues. This is not about me. Uh, the, one of the big stories is about what is really um, an unprecedented assault on the constitutional separation of powers and the uh, doctrine of executive privilege as, it, as, a, as a critical tool dating back to George Washington of effective presidential decision making. When I walk in that prison today, the justice system such as it is will have done a crippling blow to the constitutional separation of powers and executive privilege. The second and related story has to do with the emergence of lawfare and the partisan weaponization of our justice system, uh, which we have seen come to this country with a vengeance since the coming of Donald John Trump as president. Uh, and that keeps getting worse. So let me walk you through those two stories and, and again i'm hoping as journalists you will you will do some background some research I'm, I'm 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 asking you to fact check everything i say today uh and write the bigger stories here which i think are the important ones so let's let's talk about some facts here i am the first senior white house advisor in the history of our republic that has ever been charged with this alleged crime. And I say alleged because for hundreds of years, 
Uh, this has not been a crime, and for 50 years, the Department of Justice has maintained the principle of absolute testimony immunity. And it was only with my case that somehow uh, that has changed. And here's, here's where the homework is, because the big constitutional separation of powers um, are these. Can Congress compel a senior White House advisor, what they call the alter ego of a president, to testify before Congress? And, and executive privilege goes back to George Washington and his remarks to the uh, Congress regarding the Jay Treaty. And he said very simply and clearly, succinctly, elegantly, that to write to the Congress, he said, I cannot command you, as members of Congress, to come to me. You cannot command me to come to you. And the reason is the All right, and he will be reporting to that prison uh, 2 p.m. So then the cunt, and you know what? Yeah, I, I am going to be using that word with a degree of frequency tonight. I have fact checked that. That is, that is correct. Uh, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, that, that, um, that fucking cunt cuts him off. Okay, this is beyond an outrage. As you can tell, I'm a little bit pissed. I'm sorry, if you don't like bad language, do not be on this stream tonight because you're going to fucking get it. All right. The people that are doing this deserve the death penalty, period, for what they are doing to this country and to the Constitution and to the rule of law in this country. There is no forgiveness there. It, we will show you no mercy. They deserve 10 times worse than what they're doing to this man who did, as he pointed out, nothing beyond what any other servant of the executive branch has ever done. Now, he's begging journalists to get out there and have something to say about this and educate the people. Blake, you're a journalist. What do you think of this latest fresh outrage that, I mean, I'm sorry if my language is harsh, it's gonna to be tonight. Uh, and you guys can freely disclaimer it if you want. But yeah. um, this guy, the, the people that are doing this, I'm just gonna say French Revolution. Okay, go ahead, Blake. Right, so yeah, they, that's, they're the bigger fish to fry, obviously. They're trying to go after him for something. It's basically a fishing expedition because he didn't want to show up at the J6 kangaroo court, which we know has been discredited, and they're deleting evidence. We just found out it was a huge scandal with uh, you know Liz Cheney uh, withholding the information that they knew that they were calling for 10,000 uh, National Guard troops to guard the Capitol that day. And so it was already, they knew what was going to happen, but now they're going to try to get him for contempt of court because he didn't want to show up for that thing. Well, I, I, nobody could blame him. But it's also the double standard. Like, you know, Eric Holder, a former attorney general, should have been uh, hit with, a, he was found guilty in contempt, but then Obama used executive privilege to protect him from the, uh, the gun running to uh, drug lords in Mexico under Fast and Furious. And then he ended up uh, resigning. So, but they're just trying to go after anybody in the Trump administration, wherever they can, to make it look like, the, you know, they're a, a criminal syndicate when it's them that should be uh, scrutinized for all of the things that they've been doing. Yeah, this is pure, um, pure Stalinism, pure fascism, pure Gestapo tactics, and everybody, including the Supreme Court that didn't stop this, deserves the French Revolution treatment. Uh, am I wrong, Brooks? No, you're not wrong. And four months will go quick, and Navarro will serve his time with distinction and honor, and uh, he'll get out. But he is not going to bend. He is not going to take a deal. He's not going to take a bribe, and he's not going to be commanded by Congress. Well, yeah, but the problem is, is that is that you know people can only be abused for so long, and if there is an our side, and I guess we should ask that question. Do you really think there's anybody on our side? Why don't they act? Why don't they get rid of all these people at in all these offices? You know, let's just thin the herd. 
let's get rid of all these Democrats that are doing all of these illegal, immoral, unconstitutional things. And when I say get rid of them, I'm like open to options. Why? Why is there is there anybody you think on our side at all? Well, I think the precedent has been set now. So when this election happens and Trump wins all 50 states, because he's probably going to run unopposed, to tell you the truth, uh, that I think is going to also happen in the Senate and Congress. We're going to have a resounding majority uh, for really the first time in 40 years. And I think they should do the same thing. They should call these people in, and when they refuse to show up, find them in contempt and put them in federal prison. We now have precedent. <laughs> yeah, but, but like, what good does precedent do us if we never act? I mean, we would never, you know, again, conservatives have principles. Um, so we don't do these kinds of things. So what good does it do to have a precedent, Brooks, if, in fact, we never act on it? Well, that's true. And, and I remember uh, when the uh, House, uh, I, I can't remember what the guy's name was now. He's, he's, he never ages. But uh, he had the FBI in front of him, and he was making criminal a case before them and said, he asked them, why haven't you arrested them? And they said, well, no one's made a referral. He said, well, you'll have a referral in the morning. Yeah. And they didn't arrest him. Yeah. Nothing ever well, happened. The FBI's corrupt. Yeah, they they didn't process it. Again, the whole, every FBI building in the country, they need to surround it. They need to put fences up. They need to build a concrete sarcophagus over the top <laughs> of it. Like at Chernobyl, cut off the food, cut off the water, cut off the electricity, and let them eat themselves. That's what needs to happen to the fucking <laughs> FBI. Well, I would approve their new FBI building, and then I would bulldoze the present one, and then take 10 years to build a new one. Yeah, there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> I'm still not going to do it because they're still going to be they're going to be like termites and rats then sneaking into yourself uh, into different you know all these different places you want them concentrated in one place so all right guys um this situation is is beginning to remind me very very deeply of the fall of rome the situation where rome fell from being a republic into an empire and i i have always believed the historical comp for donald trump is julius caesar and as was said of caesar though of noble blood himself caesar stands with the common people a man like that an aristocrat with soldiers money and the love of the people might make himself king and that is what they fear in the optimates or optimates class that is the ruling class of washington dc but they will stop at nothing to get this guy. Trump this week said, if I'm not reelected, there will be a bloodbath in the automotive industry or something along those lines. What the media reported is Trump said, if I'm not elected, there will be a bloodbath, implying that he was going to slaughter people in the streets, which frankly, where I'm sitting right now, wouldn't be a horrible idea. But that's just me, uh, as long as they were all Democrats. So um, this degree of lying has gone on and on and on and on, and it just never stops. And I, what I'm wondering is what hope, what hope do you guys have um, that this will ever be resolved? Because you know what Trump, what Trump, what Caesar did, the only way Caesar fixed the Republic, you know what he did? Brooks, you know what he did? Blake, you know what he did? Can't he remember. took the Asians and he crossed the Rubicon River and he marched on Rome. And that is exactly what we need to do today. Because we're going to go on to more, one more outrage after another, after another, before this is over. Do I have a question? I don't know. Anybody got anything to say? <laughs> well, I think uh, what we have seen here is the rise of the bureaucracy. Now we know what an aristocracy is. We know what a monarchy is. We know what democracy is. A bureaucracy is a rule by bureaus. That's where we are right now. We are being ruled by bureaus. And that's what needs to be broken apart. Now, ostensibly, all these bureaus, departments, agencies, administrations are an extension of the executive branch. But obviously, they're not. Because when Trump was president, they did not work with the executive branch. They worked against the executive branch. But what the president should do is exactly what 
I have been saying for six months and what Vivek Ramaswamy has been saying for several months, and that is we need to call a representative of all of them in, all 653 of them, and say, today, half of you are out of a job. That's it. You're done. No more Department of Education. No more Department of Energy. No more EPA. Just end them. Put them on unemployment lines and end those departments just like that by executive order. And it could be done legally. Yeah, because they're all federal agencies. All right. Um, I wanted to um, I wanted to play a video here. This is uh, a guy named Bernie Moreno who actually comes through and, and says um, he states the obvious. And Senator Vance does uh, that there will be a bloodbath on the. Um, in the auto industry if Joe Biden's reelected. I got to say, Sean, this entire episode, I think, has taught us something about weak willed Republicans, because it's not just the Democrats who have attacked Donald Trump for telling the truth. It's also a lot of weak willed Republicans. It's one of the reasons why you'll see I've endorsed Bernie Marino, a guy who's been going across the state of Ohio, who's got a big election tomorrow. And he's been saying defending Donald Trump, not running away from this media firestorm. And that's what we've got to do. Send not just Donald Trump to the White House, but send good Republicans to fight for the agenda that's good for the people of Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. Uh, that's exactly what Bernie Marino is trying to do, and that's what we've got to do more of, Sean. Anybody who's running away from this firestorm is a political idiot, and they're not, they've not got the best interest of the people of Ohio at heart. Trump told the truth. Let's defend him, and let's push that message yeah. forward. I got to say, Sean, this entire episode, I think, has taught us uh, something about weak willed Republicans because it's not just the Democrats. That I thought was really, really good stuff. Um, really, really good stuff from Senator J.D. Vance. And um, Blake, I guess I want to ask you, um, and I got to run and do something real quick, but I want to ask you, um, what do you think about the parallel and what do you think about? what he has to say about the bloodbath thing. I mean, that's right up your alley. It's a, it's a media thing. Well, as far as the bloodbath, I mean, just them taking it out of context and having zero self-awareness, not apologizing when they knew what had happened, that it was just something that they, they, they fell for a hoax, whether it was intentional or not. But it's, it's sad that the media can never, you know, be intellectually honest and just say that we messed up. Right. Maybe I'm missing part of the point here but um it's also an interesting thing with the bloodbath as far as with the auto industry is that uh, the workers actually stand for trump and not historically they're usually union they're democrats they vote for biden that's their base that's their audience and now they're really under threat from trump uh, coming back, they, they fear him, and they're getting—they're losing all of these voters. They see it with you know, blacks or Hispanics or the unions, other li liberals. So they're seeing the, the internal polls, and they see how popular Trump is, and they're just finding anything. They're just grasping at straws, and this is another hoax that has backfired on them. Yeah, and the, the thing is, is that um, it, it's once again, it, it's just. Every time they do this, every time they they distort what he says, he goes up in the polls. And I, I haven't checked any any lately, but I have a feeling he's going to go up in the polls yet again. Um, and, and I just wonder, why do they keep doing this? Now, it's interesting because I wrote this book called The Choice, which is on this bookshelf back here somewhere. By the way, do you guys like my new Kirk versus Gordon poster? That's <laughs> nice. Yeah. I have uh, The Battle of Braun. I have... Um, I have this book called The Choice where I said, you know, at the end, the, the, the human consciousness is being driven by physics, the physics of the positions of the planets, which is my big hyperdimensional physics theory. But I said, look, if you look at this, and I wrote this in 2010, if you look at this, what's going to happen towards the end, like by 2024, is that everything that the establishment does, everything the optimates, if you will, do is going to blow up in their faces. And that seems to be what's happening. So the more these things blow up in their faces, the more desperate they seem to get. And one of the desperate things they're doing now is they are now claiming, they're saying that Donald Trump has to post a $454 million bond in New York State in order to even appeal his bullshit verdict 
about committing fraud in New York State. And he says, well, I, I can't get anybody to, I can't get anybody to, to cover me for a $454 million bond. Now, they're all saying, well, Trump is broke and blah, 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 and all this other crap. And it really doesn't make, um, it really doesn't make any sense because the reality is, um, I don't know. Uh, let's wait and see. Let's see what, let's see what um, Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary has to say about this ridiculous situation in New York State. I was wondering, if he can't get to the Supreme Court, will you loan him the $460 million? <laughs> You know, Just to help, in order to protect America's name. The, Think of get, it that way. To get the bond, <laughs> he, he was able to get the 90 plus million from Chubb. Yeah. Um, it's, I don't know of a bond more than 90 million. I, I don't recall not, one. Yeah, you and can't so you it. need cash to back up the bond insurance. And so now we're talking about the, the, the terminology of seizing assets that actually, that's foreign language to an American right. investor. Right. They want due process. Right. They want the appeal. It, that sounds like Venezuela. It sounds like Cuba. Mm -hmm. It's a really bad look for New York, but I think it's gone beyond New York now. Bipartisan participants and financial services managers are not okay with this right. and very getting very uncomfortable. And I think whether it's the Supreme Court that provides the adult supervision, whether it's somebody else, we desperately need for this kid's party for the adults to get home. Yeah. We need them to come home now. Some, some, some um, appellate court. Okay, so um, what's really happening there is that, um, why does it keep doing that? Is that they're trying to seize Donald Trump's assets. They're trying to seize his hotels and his businesses and everything in there and, and that he has in New York State. And it's outrageous because, first of all, the, the verdict was a farce. It was a kangaroo court. The verdict was predetermined. This is straight out of out of Hitler's. Actually, Hitler's Germany was far more fair than this. Solidist Russia is more what it's like. And this grotesque fucking cunt, Letitia James, is getting away with it. And unless they unless somebody does something, First of all, you know, a $454 million bond is outrageous. And what's Trump, what Trump is saying is, oh, I don't have the cash for that. Plus, I don't know if that's true or not, but what I think he's actually doing is he's trying to force this issue to a higher court. But the reality is they're not engaging. They're not taking the fucking case. So we are about to sit here and see a man's fortune be stolen by criminals who ought to be getting the French Revolution treatment. Brooks, am I wrong? Well, there is a five-judge panel that's looking at it. They haven't made a decision yet. This is obviously a violation of the Eighth Amendment, which is an amendment that protects Americans against unreasonable bail, uh, which, by the way, applies to criminal and civil cases. And uh, what they're using is a New York trick, which says you have to put up the money before you can appeal. So they made it so unreasonably high that he actually had to go get underwriters to do it. Well, the problem is that underwriters are then at risk. And they've seen what they've done to Trump on a legal real estate transaction to get a loan on property, to improve the property, pay the loan back with interest, and everybody's happy. Uh, that is such a normal, everyday process that everybody does in New York, everybody does in Florida, everybody does in North Carolina. The problem is... Now everybody's at risk. So what has happened is the underwriters have left the state. You see, you need an underwriter because, like, if you're going to sell your house, uh, Mike, there are comparable houses like yours in your neighborhood. So they can look and see what other houses have sold for, and they can appraise your property like those. It's called a comparable. There is no comparable once you get to these big buildings, these skyscrapers, these these conversions, Mar-a-Lago. There are no comps. So underwriters have to step in and have to shoulder the risk. They get paid for it, but they're the ones that shoulder the risk of the appraisers will back the loans. When the underwriters leave, the loans stop. And when the loans stop, the building stops. The, the business, the industry disappears. 
So this is going to become its own pressure. The time is actually on Trump's side, not on Letitia James's side. The industry will revolt, and it won't be millions. It will be hundreds of billions of dollars. Yeah, but the thing is, is that she can start seizing his assets next week. This fucking cunt can start seizing his assets next week for something that wasn't even A, a crime, or B, even happened, or legitimately tried. And it, like nobody is fucking doing anything about it. And what they should be doing is, as Micah said, going French Revolution on these people. Wow. I agree with you. This is, I right. mean, they call it lawfare, but you know, that's kind of so cake and icing. Yeah, and everybody who practices that should also be going to the, the French Revolution. I, I've always called it litigious terrorism. It they're using terror. the law as a weapon of terror well, and, and they're terrorizing because, americans because again all of these institutions that are supposed to be protecting americans from this are failing them that's right that that's should, right should get the same punishment look i know i'm out i'm i'm so fucking pissed today i'm i'm out here uh, you know on my own i do not represent the views of these other two gentlemen i would like that to be well known but blake i mean <laughs> If, if they can get away with this and not end up under the guillotine, then then we have no fucking country left, do we? She's no, we can just say goodbye to the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. I mean, that should be outlined in there. And if I'm in, interpreting it right, excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines, cruel and unusual punishments, due process of law. I mean, I'm looking at all of this. I'm just, this is not something our, our forefathers had in mind is where the courts uh, turned on, you know, your political opposition. It is the the end of the Republic. Um, and yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. It's like selling properties. Like he's, like he's, even if they had a case and he owed this money, if people are saying he's, he's broke or whatever, but it's not like he's got 460 million just, you know, liquid sitting in a bank or under his bed, you would have to liquidate stocks bonds cds properties which you can't do so now they're just going to try to like seize it i mean they are just making and, rules up as they go along it's it's shocking and, and the, yeah, goal, the goal is to take him off the campaign trail to drain his resources yeah. so that he cannot go on the campaign trail in fact i think it was one of the news people that was interviewing laura trump and uh she said can you guarantee to us that uh, President Trump will not use any of the RNC money to pay his legal bills? What kind of a question is that? Yeah. And uh, what's wrong with that? That's what Democrats do all the time anyway. So I don't know. Um, guys. Uh, and he's got a right to appeal, right? It's He, he should have go through that entire process. At the to very end. You have to that's put up a fucking dime to appeal. Not right. one fucking red cent. That's right. That's right. You know, you know what he ought to do? He ought to he ought to have somebody mint a 0.99999 pure gold <laughs> coin in the amount of four hundred and fifty four million dollars and say, "Here you go, four hundred and fifty four million dollars. I just gave you a coin. Go fuck yourself." That's right. It's legal um, tender. You can print money, and so can I. Yeah, but um, all right. What do you guys think is going to happen next week? Do you think that this fucking cunt is going to get away with stealing his assets or do you think it's somehow going to be put to a stop brooks i think the the uh, supreme court is going to step in because this is a judgment it's a civil judgment and uh, the supreme court is going to step in and say and put a stay in place and it's not going to go anywhere Letitia james has made herself a multi multi-millionaire in her office and she has violated uh the oath by by exhibiting extreme prejudice, which is not what the law is about at all. And the Supreme Court has to step in and make things right. And I think that's what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, Blake, what do you think is going to happen next week? Is she going to get away with stealing Donald Trump's tr property? Or is somebody going to step in and save the day? No, I don't think they could risk the backlash of that. I, I, yeah, I hope the uh, cooler heads prevail somewhere. At least the Supreme Court can come in and say, ah, oh, sorry, you, you can't do that. Yeah, okay. you, you can um, appeal without putting the bond up. That's what that the decision is going to come down. Yeah. And then James is done. She's She's finished. And Donald Trump's poll numbers will continue to go up. And I think that uh, Joe Biden is very close to having a stroke 
that is going to take his I am. speech away. And he won't be able to speak. I, I definitely think that uh, that uh, Joe Biden's days are numbered as far as them wanting him to stay in office. It's not a matter of, hey, Joe, are you going to run in 2024? It's, are you going to be president in 2024? Yeah. Um, okay. Well, you know, look, you have far more faith in the Supreme Court of the United States than I do. Having said that, they did do one thing right. They did. This week, they actually ruled, believe it or not, uh, they ruled that the state of Texas can actually arrest and deport criminal aliens. They can do that. Uh, they, could, they could sweep the state. They could deputize the National Guard and they could sweep the state of Texas. The Supreme Court will now allow the Texas National Guard to arrest and deport aliens within the state of Texas. It's a big blow to the Biden administration. Uh, there they are. There's some of the heroes that are doing this stuff. Go ahead. Am I sharing? Yes, I am. Um, you know, and I, I, I say, like you said, I say deputize them all. I, I'm shocked. I gotta be, I gotta be honest. I am shocked that Greg Abbott, um, who is a simp and a wimp and a rhino has actually been as tough as he's been on illegal aliens lately. But, um, Blake, do you think that this is, this is a good sign. Do you think it's a it's a sign of things to come? Do you actually think that other states states along the border might follow suit here? Oh, they should. I mean, probably not Arizona, but yeah, Florida could wherever they're having an issue. It's just going to depend on the state. But yeah, it's great to see that that happened. So that was a yeah huge uh, turnaround in our favor, I guess, or just like a back to you know common sense. Like that's the way it should have been the entire time. And they've allowed this to, you know, to fester and continue and turn into this huge crisis. And so now they can actually go back and uh, do their job. So, yeah, you're gonna, this is going to be the biggest issue of 2024. Wasn't this the plan? The plan to invade the United States with illegal yeah. aliens, Brooks? Yeah, it's actually a three-part plan. And you need to look at the long picture. First of all, they want to get the illegals in. Then the acting secretary of labor, whose name was Julie Sue, and they would not approve her as secretary of labor, but doesn't matter. She is producing green cards and giving it to the illegals. So with a green card, they can go get a driver's license. With a driver's license, they are registered to vote. And we know this because they're showing up in California, Illinois, and New Jersey as jurists. Why? Because they're registered to vote. But that's the short game. The long game is, in nine months, there aren't going to be 15 million illegals in this country. There are going to be 22,500,000, and a third of them will be citizens. That's, that's the long game. That's the plan. The plan is to, just like Rome, destroy the country from the inside. And not only that, Brooks, but they're going to be armed as well. Because guess what? Now, a fucking cunt obama appointed federal judge has decided that illegal aliens can legally carry guns in fact it's easier to carry a gun now if you're an illegal alien than it is if you're an american citizen now this yesterday, is, uh, yesterday this morning is, i was on the radio with victor avila who's uh, didn't win his uh, primary in texas but he's running against a guy named herrera who's also good but he was a former border patrol guy and he said if we catch an illegal alien with a gun he's finished he goes to prison or he is deported immediately no pass and go no collecting two hundred dollars what this judge did is say that this illegal alien had second amendment rights what second amendment rights right right and and you know again blake they're bringing them in here they're making them residents they're giving them the right to vote all this year, all by the 2024 general election, and they're arming them so they can attack Americans. Now, if this isn't treason, if this isn't, if this isn't punishable by the French Revolution treatment, tell me something that is, Mr. Wally. No, this is blatant treason, and this is probably the only way they can win the election. And it's just extraordinarily a desperate maneuver. I mean, to actually destroy the, the country from within just so they can stay in power. So they actually, a leftist judge, an Obama appointee, you'd be shocked that they're actually doing something pro-gun and it's for illegal aliens. <laughs> it's insane. People that have no loyalty to this country. 
we don't know who the, who they are. I mean, it's it's breathtaking. It's so, well, a treason for sure. Yeah, that's not a uh, that's not a word I would like to use. Is breathtaking. It's uh, if you're as you can tell, I'm a little pissed. <laughs> You know, it's it's absolutely nuts. And and so the only way that I can see this ending up is, well, what did Nico say earlier? They want us to start a civil war. Well, who, who says no? Well, we know that there are command and control centers in every single metro in our country. We know those command and control centers are working with not just Hispanic illegals, <laughs> African illegals, mm -hmm. Middle Eastern uh, illegals, Ukrainian illegals. They're in our country and they're being given weapons and money and orders. And even the FBI has come out and warned us that there are 20 cities we know they're operating cells in those cities and they could hit all 20 cities at the same time i don't think they're going to do it too early but i think they're going to do it pretty close to labor day and that's not what's going to initiate martial law believe it or not that attack is not going to initiate martial law what's going to initiate martial law is our reaction to that us taking up arms against them that's what's going to elicit martial law yeah, you know, it's, um, hang on a second, um, Kate Middleton. Okay. Um, it's, people have been commenting about how all these billionaires are building bunkers. They're not building bunkers because of an asteroid. They're not building bunkers because the aliens are coming. They're building bunkers because they're afraid of us. They're building bunkers because of they're afraid of what's going to happen. And I, I really think that we deserve, they deserve to get what's going to happen. I think they should go ahead and get in them now and yeah. we'll take it from here. Get in there and cut off your internet and stay away. Because then all you got to do is just find the holes where the vents are and just fill them with concrete and uh, problem solve. <laughs> right? Easy so. enough. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I just, it's, it's been one outrage after another, after another. And let's face facts. The lies and the stories look away from the lies and the stories that were told that is the theme of the song tonight look away by big country and don't look away i'm saying no don't look away confront them straight up because there is there are reports out there and that either charles and or kate middleton have assumed room temperature that they're dead and there were some weird things on there. The Twitter X logo. Let me see, or uh, Twitter X logo for BBC. Let me, let me look up the BBC. Did you see that here. skinny ass double they marched out in. Yeah, public? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting there. Hang on. Uh, the BBC. Yeah, the logo for the BBC is still black, and it that's usually a sign that somebody's dead. A royal is dead, and hmm. you know, Kate, Kate has not been seen in public since christmas and then the other day last week they floated out a, a, a photo a family photo saying no look she's fine with her kids and they people it's photoshopped they actually it's proven that it's photoshopped and then supposedly she she was seen casually walking in london um uh da, 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 uh, okay uh actually al uh, adam says he's going to be our spy on the ground i will visit the farm shop on the way to the hotel mm -hmm. tomorrow in Windsor, and I will do some asking. So what they said was that uh, Kate and William were actually seen casually strolling and doing some shopping in London yesterday. There, there's just a little bit of a problem with this. And let me find, let me find the appropriate um, video here. Um, this is this is what the royal family actually looks like. Uh, on the left is uh, Meghan Markle. We are counting her. There's King Charles. There's Kate Middleton, who looks a little bit like what? Lucy Lawless, Xena Warrior Princess, and Prince William. This is what they actually look like, um, according to, you know, according to uh, photos that we've seen recently. But then they were seen strolling along in, um, in <laughs> London, and they were, we were shown photographs of Kate. But why did I just have it here? Yeah, this is the photo. Um, and I, I'll try to look at the video while you guys are chit-chatting. Um, 
guys, that ain't Kate Middle. That's not Kate Middleton. Nope, hair's parted I, on the wrong side. I'm not sure, I'm not sure that's William either. So uh, I'll try to find a little bit better picture, but let's discuss while I'm doing that. Um, guys, it's pretty obvious that it's not them. People like Piers Morgan were like, oh, it's so great to see the Royal couple out there. And <laughs> disproving all the conspiracy theories. And then he posts again, well, I, I see that from my reactions, it's actually increasing the conspiracy theories. I'm going to find a little bit better close-up. There's a couple close-ups. It appears clearly not to be the same woman. So what i mean i hear i there's rumors out there that they won't announce both they they have to they're gonna they're both of them are dead and they're gonna announce the kate the the king first and then kate but it's they they, they can't have william the heir without a wife without a queen so mm -hmm. do you think maybe that this woman is his new squeeze that she's been dead for i don't know i well, you guys speculate i'm gonna start with you blake and sure. for a couple better pictures to make it even clearer. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing that they think they can get away with this. They're they're covering this up. They're trying to, I guess, buy more time. Um, but yeah, it's amazing they came up with an actual like a bad Photoshop. Once you could scrutinize, you could really see. And it was amazing that they would try to fool the whole like you know British public, including the whole planet, uh, when when they could easily show proof of life. Uh, for, for Kate within a few minutes, you know, get her some makeup, get her camera ready. And it would just, it would dispel the rumors so quickly. Now, Charles, we do know he's uh, had a, a cancer. I don't know if it was pancreatic or something bad, but it sounded like he, you know, is due to expire soon. So that shouldn't be a shocker, but with Kate, yeah. then people are have a right to be freaking out. What is the cause of that they are obviously hiding something and they have to have an extraordinary explanation uh for why they have been able to do this and i don't think they can get their story straight so yeah we gotta prepare for some really tragic news with the royal family the Anyone? rumor is vaccine injury that she died of her vaccine injuries mm. as we talk about very frequently how old is she's not 47 yet is she brooks um but anyway she died of her vaccine injury is is the rumor her own dad apparently said last week, well, I haven't seen her in months. And if I don't see her soon, I'm going to have to assume that something's happened to her. That she's not. Her own lawyer said that her own, her best lawyer said she's dead. Yeah. And I'm Scottish, so I could care less about the Royals. Mm -hmm. I think they should have been dead a hundred years ago. The sooner, the better. But this is, um, again, this <laughs> The shot of of Kate Middleton um, as she is, supposedly exists, and then uh, this is the shot from the video, and I think you can see quite clearly uh, that it's not the same woman. And um, what that you know, and again, there's some stuff over here. There's some stuff over here in the um, in the chat that says this is the woman that the press said William had an affair with. She was Kate's friend, and they say she is pregnant. She's preggers, yeah. Now, I, that woman from the video that I could tell didn't look pregnant. But guys, I, I, I know what you're saying about that, about the royals doesn't matter. But it does matter because if, if the structure of society as it currently exists, the corrupt structure is going to collapse, the royals of England are at the forefront of it. So to me, if they start to collapse, that means the Vatican and the banking systems and everything else follows. The bloodline. That is the strongest domino. And if that domino falls and loses all of its credibility, everything else does too, doesn't it? Am I wrong? Yep. No, it's all about the bloodline. The bloodline is what they have been protecting for thousands of years. And what they've been doing the last, I guess, 50 years is they have been consuming children. They've been consuming adrenochrome and they've been consuming infant blood. They actually have infant blood transfusions about every three or four months. The trouble with that activity is it will destroy your pancreas. It will destroy your pancreas. And, and that's what's happening to these people. That's why they're falling apart. But it's, it's done by Hollywood all the time. They have these infant 
blood transfusions and then they get shot up with a bunch of vitamins and they're good to go for about 90 days then they well, need another one that's the thing is, um uh mick jagger and keith richards have been doing the blood transfusion thing not supposedly from children but for g since the 1970s that's how keith richards kicked heroin was he transfused all the blood in his body with new blood and so, yes, it does happen. Yes, it is demonic and evil, but uh, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, Blake, are you still with us? You look frozen. Blake? Oh, he looks frozen. Blake, are you there? Blake, did you fall asleep on us? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't want, it's not fair to tease him. Uh, and that, yeah, that is not Kate. Uh, there was a video today with a very thin Kate, but it was really her. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Um, oh, okay. We lost him. Maybe we'll get him back here in a sec. Hang on. Um, all right. Guys, I don't know what to make of all this, but I think we should um, get ready to wrap it up here. And um, I want to get predictions in. So I want to see what your predictions are about stuff. I, I'd like to keep it. Um, there's Blake. There you are, Blake. You froze. Ah, no. All right, so I'm ready to get out of here and go have some dinner. Um, predictions time. Ooh. And I want to, you guys can make any prediction you want, but I want to kind of ask you your prediction. I think we already did this, but my prediction is yes, that they will continue to get away with everything and that Letitia James will seize some of Donald Trump's New York property next week. That's my prediction. And it should lead to a civil war. It should lead to military intervention against the fake fraudulent governments that are out there, but I don't think it's going to lead to any of that. Um, Brooks, what do you think about my prediction and do you have any predictions of your own or no? I, I don't doubt your prediction. I look at the E. Jean Carroll and how she's already spending the money uh, from the uh, defamation suit right. against the, uh, against President Trump. Letitia James is already out there in public smacking her lips about how she's going to spend all this money she's going to get from Donald Trump and what she's going to do with his properties. And I think that is going to be her undoing. Okay. And uh, Blake, any thoughts on that prediction? And do you have any predictions of your own? Yeah, I think the Supreme Court is going to, yes, stop crazy Letitia before, just for the reasons you outlined. They're going to go, oh, my God, the backlash is going to be amazing, and they're going to set that precedent, and they're going to have to say, step in, intervene, and say no. And it's going to be yet another failed attempt to uh, destroy Trump. But, uh, okay, well, be, yeah, we'll see. we'll see what happens. I clicked but, on the wrong thing. I love that hat, Brooks, says Zell. Okay. <laughs> um, all right, guys, anything you want to promote? Brooks, you want to talk about? Uh, uh, yeah, tomorrow night I have a Nate Kane, who is a, uh, a congressional candidate in West Virginia. And I know not many of you are from West Virginia, if any of you. But see, here's the deal. When we have these great candidates like Nate Kane, by the way, he's the whistleblower that brought the information from the FBI to Devin Nunez that undid the Russia hoax. He's the guy. He is a soldier, and he's a great man. He's running against a rhino in West Virginia. He's been there for years, and they think he's going to win again. But I think they're thinking wrong. What we need to do as Americans is we need to support these candidates, even if they're not in our state, because having them in Congress is winning, and that's what we need to do. So if you're, if you're anywhere around tomorrow night, Show up at America Free Radio and support Nate Kane. You can go to his website. I'll link it to mine and uh, and give him $5 or something. Contribute to his campaign. We need to have these MAGA candidates financed so they can beat these rhinos in Congress. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Blake, anything you want to talk about here before we... Uh go on we may have one more story here i was there is one i kind of forgot blake uh oh, okay any, anything you want to tell tell everybody sure. about yeah pe sure Where people can check out the the next level news.com i got the archive there all of our shows as well as uh i did a show today with uh brian engelman of the new american media we do it the agree to disagree show and we cover the latest news and current events and go into a lot of these topics so yeah please go uh, check that out sometime Okay, 
All right. All right. Yeah, thenextlevelnews.com. It's a great site. And don't forget, you can get your Ivan and Roxy from Dr. Brooks Agnew over at brooksagnew.blog. Okay, there is one other story that, uh, all right, let's, uh, Nate Kane, here's a link. Nate Kane for West Virginia, for WV.com. If you want to go to his website and give him some money, please do that. Even, even $20 yep. helps more than you know. Yep. These guys can win, and this is the guy that ended the Russia hoax. He's the guy, the brave soldier who did this. All right, guys, I have um, I've been telling you since 2010 that the United States is no longer a country, that it's a corporation, and that it falls under the laws of corporations. And some people think this is from the Act of 1871. Some people think it go, goes back even further than that. But apparently, traitor, traitorous slob pig General Mark Milley had some interesting things to say in front of Congress today. Mm. So let's, uh, let's do a little screen share on that and watch that before we get out of here and then make maybe a couple of uh, final comments on this sucker. Here we go. And Let's listen to what Milley has to say. To both of you, to General Milley, do you think that these documents should be turned over to the United States Congress? And do you think that both General Donahue and Admiral Vasely should testify before Congress? Sure, I absolutely do. I believe transparency. You're the board of directors for this corporation called the American government. Whoa, whoa. And, and I, I believe Ooh. that you're entitled to those within the bounds of classification are the board of directors for this corporation called the american government so millie has all are the board of directors for this corporation called the american government what millie has all but admitted with that statement that the united states is a corporation and can be taken apart under those laws. What do you guys think of that one real quick before we go, Blake? Well, if, if we had a real press, they should be asking him those questions. Because that is, uh, yeah, he accidentally kind of spilled the beans. That's probably how they talk internally. And he probably didn't mean that for uh, public consumption. So now he perhaps uh, opened up a can of worms. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and then the public should uh, have a right to know what, right. uh, what's really happening and how the things are actually running in Washington. It's not the republic our forefathers started. Um, so people are saying that, no, this audio has been altered and his lips are not completely in sync with that. Uh, we will check on that one. It would certainly be fascinating stuff. And I'm not seeing any official um, official posts from really important people. But what do you think? Uh, what do you think about that possibility, Brooks? Well, it's possible it's deep fake. Uh, I do know there's a war going on in the Pentagon. Uh, there is an operation, well, not an operation, but a, a project called Operation Star Shield. You know what Starlink is? Starlink is the internet satellites that are going up. Star Shield are spy satellites that are being put up by SpaceX. Mm -hmm. And they've been uh, going up for about three years now. And what these satellites do is they allow the Defense Department, our Defense Department, to target individual people anywhere on the planet, anywhere on the planet. Interesting. Interesting. All right, guys, that is going to wrap it up. Apparently, uh, quickly got into that. Some people are saying that that video is a hoax. I haven't had a chance to look at it. I quickly rushed it up because I did want to mention it and bring it up, but I hadn't had a chance to look at it. Thank you guys for being here. We'll be back next Toxically Masculine Tuesday, in which Mike will probably see bomb a little bit less, but I don't know. It may be worse. <laughs> it may be worse. Thank you guys for being here. Any final thoughts, Blake or Brooks? Blake, uh, again, Brooks are going to be watching you on America Free Radio tomorrow. Uh, Blake, when's the next the next um, show? Free to disagree. Nice. Probably Thursday afternoon. I think that's where we're going to go. Tuesday and Thursday for now, 3 p.m. Eastern time. You guys can now participate. We love the uh, the comments and the uh, back and forth and the interactions, and people can drive the show. So, All yeah, right. check it out. Thanks for your support. Maybe we'll see you there. Okay, guys, thanks for being here. We'll see you. I'll be back with Jen tomorrow at 10 a.m. I believe I'm being on with Jen tomorrow. 
at 10 a.m. Everybody say hi. Everybody say bye. Thanks for being here. We love you. Bye. All right. Good night.